Hello everybody. We have another game with the white pieces against AN34, an officially rated 1700 player. We open up E4, E5, and we play the bishop's opening. Now we're playing it against a 1700. Let's see how they respond. They develop their knight. What does this threaten? Develops a piece towards the center. No real drawback. We develop our queen's knight in a similar fashion. Also, developing a piece, controlling the center. Black goes g6. What does this threaten? Nothing. Maybe. I don't know what Fianchettoing does because his pawn's here, so I have no idea what this move is. It's very weird to me. Um, but okay. Um, the drawback, other than being weird, is it weakens these two squares. So I'm going to continue normally and just solidify my pawn chain and open up my bishop. So he does Fianchetto. What does this threaten? Nothing. What's the drawback? This is a terrible square for the bishop because it's looking at its pawn. C5 would be much better. A much better diagonal, but... I, I don't know. Maybe he has some idea. We'll see. Um, okay. So... That's so weird. Normally, you know, I've been trying to play a 5 in these, but that just opens up his bishop. So, specifically because of that, I'm not going to be playing f4 here right now. Um, I mean, it's still playable, but I don't want to. So instead, I'm going to do a normal developing move and just bring the knight out towards the center. And I'll play a normal game, but with his bishop fianchettoed, which looks weird to me. So I should be better to some extent. He develops his knight. What does this threaten? Nothing really. Blocks his bishop, blocks his f pawn, has no forward jumps really. Um, but that's all because of this weird fin kettle thing. So, anyway, uh, I want to continue developing. If I pin the knight, he will just kick it. And if I develop my bishop here, he will just kick it. So, I'm going to start with h3. And this gives. Um, me the option of going here and then he can't kick it okay so he castles what does this threaten nothing it's just developing king safety drawback nothing really um, I could go here double create the battery and go here I could castle I'm gonna develop my bishop and stay f flexible he could hunt my bishop so you could do something like a4 making space, but mm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to develop. He can have my bishop. My pawns are on light, so he could take my light bishop. Okay, so he plays a6. What does this threaten? Probably to just pawn storm, hit the bishop, and then the knight follow up. But I'm okay with that. The drawback is it wastes time. It doesn't develop his pieces. So I'm happy to see something that doesn't develop. I'm going to develop my queen and lift it, creating this battery. And potentially castling queenside. We'll see. I'm keeping the option open. So he goes b5. What does this threaten? My bishop. And then after that, maybe to advance. Um, if we go here, it offers a trade immediately. So we might as well go here and just solidify it like this. And if he kicks our knight, you can just jump in. So he fianchettos his other bishop. What is this threat? Nothing. It's also staring at a pawn. Both of his bishops are staring at pawns. Um, whereas mine are both open. Drawback. This stuff is kind of loose. Uh, you could probably even start with a4 and stuff. But I don't want to play like that right now. What do I want to do? Hmm. Let's see. Do I want to just go for this? The thing is, his bishop is trash. It's a good defender, though. It's a, it's a bad attacker. It's a good defender. But whatever. I'm going to go for it. Let's remove the defender. There are other ways to play this. You can castle. You can play the A pawn. You could probably move the knight. Maybe play the G pawn even. G4. So anyway, he ignores me. He goes B4. What does this threaten? My knight. 
drawback it's slow it's a pawn move it weakens both of these light squares for my pieces so not a fan of the move um, also when I jump my knight in if he trades this is his king's defender whereas this knight that he's trading for you know it's just an extra knight I have on the queen side so I'll gladly trade this extra knight that you start with in the chess game for the king's defender knight now it's obviously not an extra knight you start with I'm just that's the way I look at the queen's knight like a an extra knight um, okay so he moves his knight here what does this threaten just the bishop pair maybe some trades here the drawback is it's slow my bishops defended I could go here and try and save it but I don't want to waste time I like time oh, um, so what do we want to do we could take his bishop let's see if we take the knight he takes the queen does this trap the queen not really because he can go along this way that's interesting but I don't see the point. Um, if I go here now, then he takes my knight. I take back. Doesn't accomplish anything. And this pawn is hanging. Okay, so when he moved his knight to this side, he undefended this pawn. Oh, wait. That's now. That's this move. Okay. So, yeah. One of the drawbacks that I didn't mention is this pawn's hanging. So, what happens if I take it? And he takes. And I take and he takes and I take then he gets this pawn I see what he's doing let me take the bishop first it's a forcing move because it hits the rook he has to take back now that bishop doesn't defend this pawn in any lines what oh okay so he inter mezzoed this because this hits the queen so but what he didn't calculate so for example I take his bishop what am I threatening Yes, I'm threatening the rook, which is what I mentioned to you, and it is what he saw. But I'm also threatening this knight. And that's what he didn't see. So if I'm just threatening the rook, this is fine because it hits the queen. But I'm threatening knight with check, which takes priority over the queen. Therefore, he doesn't have time for this intermezzo. So when I move my knight here to give him this check, it hits the king. Also, I could take the knight this way, which hits the queen. So I already took... Okay, so I took a piece, he took a piece. So if I took a piece and he takes a queen, I take a queen. He takes a piece, I take a piece, he takes another piece. Interesting. If I take this piece, he takes this piece, I take this piece, he takes this piece. Somehow he's getting his piece back and I'm just winning pawns at the end of the lines. That's annoying. I want to win a full piece. So wait. I take a queen, he takes a queen, but then he takes this with check. And then I get the knight, and he gets the bishop, and then I have a knight, he has a bishop. I could take this pawn at the end. I could take this pawn. Otherwise, if I take the knight, and he takes this, I mean, I could still take a central pawn. That's kind of huge. So it works out for me anyway. I'm going to go the simple route, I think, and just take a central pawn. Because this central pawn covers dark squares. I just took his dark square bishop, right? Which means that my queen might be able to put in work on the dark squares. If I take this, this knight, again, is going to be taken. And he also has this pin. And he wins a pawn there. Lots of annoying stuff. I don't necessarily want all of that, so I think instead I'm going to go for this pawn, change my mind. And I'll take it with the knight, I take it with the queen, he still wins this over here. So I'm going to take with the knight. This open b file doesn't matter because this doubled pawn is super strong, or super protected. Now I'm up a pawn, now if I take this he doesn't have the knight in the middle like, to grab. So he pushes the pawn, what does this threaten? My knight drawback is it's super slow 
He wants me to go here so he can win another pawn. I'm actually going to go here, which looks funky. But once I reroute it to c3, it's going to look super natural. And you're going to be like, oh, that looks really nice. So he moves a rook and defends his pawn. I'm going to try to go fast um, since I'm kind of running out of time. I changed my mind once again, maybe. No, I didn't. Okay, let's just improve, improve the knight. This pawn I can coordinate with. I also can go here. I also need to castle. I don't want to run out of time. I just I have a minute 30. That's not enough. So I'm going to start moving and stop talking, hopefully. Okay, he strikes in the center. Not the best move, but whatever. Okay. Now he's going to push. So I probably need to castle. Let me just castle. Because then I'll have to, I, won't have, I won't have to calculate all the tactics. And tactics take time. And I don't have time. So let me just castle. Okay, how do I do this? This, this. He may take my knight. He doesn't have this check though. Okay, so he doesn't take my knight. Surprising. I don't want him to take my knight either. I'm going to go here and offer the queen trade real quickly. See what he does. He takes my knight. I take his queen. He takes my queen. And then I take his bishop. Now there's what much better ways to convert. He ruins my structure, but I'm up a pawn with an active rook and a pawn hanging. So, um, I'm just highlighting some things for my own well-being, so I could try to move faster. I obviously can't do the threat drawback thing out loud with you guys um, for obvious reasons. Um, what am I doing? What exactly am I doing though? I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, so now we, we caused him to uh, create this hole, which is not good for him. Now he can't defend this pawn, or he doesn't have any pawn breaks. Because both of those, any pawn he pushes, that square is defended by two pawns. So no pawn break works. I'm out of time. This is so bad. Okay, I think my king is in its active location relatively speaking. So now it's time to activate the rook. If I leave this file, he's going to get on the file. But even if he gets on the file, I'm going to scoop his pawns way too fast. And my king is in perfect cover. So he has to basically go rook g7 or rook c6. Because I'm going to get behind the pawn and those are the only two moves that can protect it. Unless he runs back with his king. Okay, I didn't see that. This protects it too, but that's a terrible idea. He does it. Now I break on the other side that his rook is trapped. Oh, I should cut off his king too. Yeah, his king doesn't have any moves here. That's brilliant. Let's, well, he got it out first. That's unfortunate. But if he moves it to this side. But now I can shoulder the king with uh, my stuff. If he moves his rook, I take the pawns. I just have 20 seconds. This is a safe pre-move. Checkmate! Wait, could he even stop that? His king can't move, and he can't move his rook anywhere. Yeah, he can't actually stop it. <laughs> yes, with 20 seconds on my clock. Let's go. That's awesome. You see, 
I wanted when his king was in uh, when his king was here I said oh let me go here because you can see it has no squares and so that's really good I got it in a turn late but instead of moving back he moved forward which reboxes him into the like the same thing just on a different square instead of instead of the d5 square he's boxing himself on the b5 square so yeah h5 is a terrible move even if you lose your pawn you have to go for activity and if you lose the game you lose the game so ah uh, these games are brutal with just 10 minutes i can't do it <laughs> i had like one minute for the entire middle game by the by the time I saw my clock so whew all right we pulled that one out another good game in the bishops opening against a 1700 um, I guess my only real question is is that fiend kettle thing like is that a, an actual idea okay so according to mr. Stockfish. G6 is not in their top five. If I play it, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. And they still like F4. They don't care. I know it was good anyway, but you guys know how I feel about opening up my opponent's pieces. Of course, it opens up mine, and my position is wonderful. But that also justifies this. And I don't want to justify his move. So I'm going to go here. And let, yeah, OK, and then the regular game, fine. OK, so apparently g6 is an idea. Looks super funky, but I guess in the bishop's opening, they know I'm, I'm going to play f4. So they're preparing the bishop on that diagonal for when it opens. So even though f4 is the move, not playing it, because that's what they want. So. Um, good game. Hopefully you learned something. Submit your games for review. Ciao.